I think that mic is on, camera is on. I'm sitting here in the sauna in Lappajärvi, Finland. Uh, the crater lake here close to uh, Vasa and close to the sea that is parting Finland from Sweden. And I've had a couple of really beautiful days up here, spending time together with the Norders team, uh, making a big a bit of a gig here, but also just experiencing Finland in the greatest times of Ruska. Uh, Ruska is something that happens here every year when summer turns into autumn and when the leaves of our trees start to turn yellow and the water starts to become cold, the weather starts to become cold and the nights start to become a bit longer and the days a bit shorter. And Today is also a really special episode in many ways because it's my first episode completely alone, just me talking to you guys. So hello everyone over there listening to today's episode. And today's episode is a lot about what is going on right now, uh, but also a bit about who I am, what I've been doing during my life. How did I end up doing this Norders thing? What is this Norders thing actually? And a bit of my passions towards all of the Nordic region and all of the things around us. And to just start things, I wanted to share a bit how I'm actually doing. And you know, as a young man, 25 years old, uh, living in uh, Finland, uh, one of our welfare countries of this world, uh, one of the greatest places to be in the world in my opinion. Uh, life is not always dancing, uh, dancing and parties, but I actually start to come to the age that I need to start to figure out what I really need to do in life. And for me, there is a lot of opportunities as for most of the young people out there today. And this all creates kind of a buzz within your head. Uh, this kind of buzz that you try to think that what is the best thing to do or what is the most beneficial thing to do. And I, I really don't think there is a right answer to that, to be honest, based on all the different things and perspectives that I've had. Uh, but I think there is a way to figure it out. And I think the way to figure it out is honesty and, and kind of like listening to yourself, a skill that I think many of us have got a bit lost with, especially during the pandemic times. As even though we are, have been forced to spend more time with ourselves than ever before, I think most of the people haven't had the right tools to work with that. And that quickly leads to a situation where we start to doubt the things that we before saw so obvious. And well, this kind of like takes me maybe to a bit to my story. So who is actually Ronnie Erickson? Why is he part of this Nordic thing? Why, why is he doing a podcast? And well, my story starts uh, some years ago, uh, when I was a child, I used to play basketball. I had a dad and a mom who were really, really amazing and loving parents and who always pushed me and challenged me. They challenged me to do things. They challenged me uh, to be competitive. They challenged me to think about the world uh, from my own uh, point of view. And this is something that I'm really grateful for. And well, uh, one thing led to another. Uh, I was a pretty decent student. I, I was focused on my studies and focused on doing the job I had to do well. But I also played basketball. And I think a big part of who Ronnie Erickson is today is formulated through my 
intensive background of, of spending my nights and weekends in practice and then spending my weekdays uh, in school. So kind of like we're built into a routine, uh, a bit of a routine in life and a bit of different things to do uh, within your life. But you learned how to actually proceed with those things. And well, uh, things escalated. Uh, I grew a bit older. I still continue to play. I, I was even chosen to be a part of the Finnish national team, which I'm really proud of. And it was a great honor to participate in that. But the only injury I really had during my career happened during that summer, whereas I jumped on a uh, on a really sharp stone <laughs> in our in our lake in our cabin. Uh, I just ran out of the bridge after a long uh, uh, basketball camp, jumped, or hurt my uh, bottom of my, my foot, and then was out of playing for the whole summer. Also out of all the basketball activities that summer and. The summer gave me a bit of time to think and I realized that I will probably not grow that tall. Uh, there is not that many not so tall basketball players of you as you all might know. And that quickly led me to a path in life where uh, I started to think that maybe I could do something else with uh, the kind of like brain power and the skill set and the drive I had within me. And I was studying at, at uh, high school at that moment and I happened to participate in this like idea development context, uh, contest they had for business school. Before uh, this, just to build a bit of background, I always was going to be a doctor. So my mom is a, a nurse and she always wanted me to kind of like continue on that path. And I always focused on and studied it to start on that path. But I think that business contest it actually made me realize that there is so much other things you could do in life and, and use your creative power combined with your grit and our sizzle to get stuff done to actually do things and build things and I happened to uh, result a second in the con contest which allowed me uh, to participate for free in, in the introduction course to Hanken School of Economics and also get the study materials for that. And uh, well I happened to apply. I, I didn't get in. Uh, I didn't study that much uh, because I knew that I was going to the military and I spent a year in the military and here I actually grew a lot as a young boy. I, I grew from a boy into a start of a man, <laughs> you could say that. And I learned that you can do whatever in life, but you need to do it, you need to get it done, and you need to pave the way yourself. It's what military is all about, it's about leading with example, uh, helping others to thrive, but getting your own stuff done and then kind of like having the room to maybe help or guide or support or get supported by someone else. After the military, I, I started at uh, Hanken uh, uh, Open University, uh, which uh, allowed me to study a full year of studies, but also get accepted into school if I did uh, well enough. And I did and I got in. And since that, I've been an entrepreneur. Uh, but also a student. Uh, the first year I started at, at university, uh, slush was a huge thing. Everyone was talking about this huge startup movement here in Finland and everyone was talking about startups and most of my friends were thinking about starting one and a couple of my friends had and because they had, uh, they saw some potential in me and my background and they asked if I was willing to join and I said yes and 2017 I became an entrepreneur. Since then I got love on the path. I've been founding different kind of initiatives. Some of them are still alive today. Some of them have died out. Uh, not that uh, big of a surprise as 9 out of 10 startups actually die out during their first year of activities. And I kind of like found this passion in not only building your own things but finding your own way through doing your own initiatives and own things because you have this freedom of 
being creative and, and having more space around you to actually look and, and feel and see uh, what could work in a context that you never before thought that it would work within. And well, uh, after a couple of uh, fun startup adventures, uh, sitting as the owner in a couple uh, still today, I uh, met with two of my really precious friends, Vincent and, and Victor. And Vincent and Victor were doing something Africa related, something I kind of like swore at that time that I will have not, nothing to do with because Africa, in the sense of Africa, has never been a big passion of mine. I have never had a continental passion. And if I would need to choose one, I would choose Asia because I've spent most of my time there. But you know, uh, something in the model of the project though inspired me. It was young people from two continents who came together to solve uh, common issues uh, with common best practices. And this was inspiring. This was interesting. It was not about the continent itself. It was about young people and it was about empowering young people. The same way I was empowered when I was younger. And this ignited my interest. And well, this project uh, called Envisage Incubators grew from uh, being just that into a concept called Ambitious Africa, into a movement called Ambitious Africa, into our organization today called Ambitious Africa. Ambitious Africa uh, was founded one year ago with the goal to link the Nordic countries with the African countries, with the goal to empower uh, youth collaboration, youth driven projects to finally solve the so sustainable development goals in a cost-effective way. And in one year it grew to an organization of 500 volunteers with a bit more than 10 uh, well-functioning cross-cultural teams and with supporters such as Bertsela, uh, who is uh, kind of like bridging the link between uh, NGOs, uh, companies through being actively there with us developing the models, how we should operate in the future. But this is only a start of something really inspiring for me, uh, something really interesting for me. Because where it all really changed was, was during this project. When I was looking at the Nordic region, everyone was stating that the Nordic region is so well connected, it's so easy to do things here, uh, the young people are so similar, the people are so similar, we're so homogeneous in a, se a sense, we're close to each other, we have this shared value base. A lot of things thrown out in the air, a lot of things I accepted, uh, I accepted as reality without doubting it for a single time, but as the project with Ambitious Africa went onward, I started to see patterns in people not understanding, in people not leveraging, in people not utilizing these benefits in the right way, and especially the highlight of all of this that it actually doesn't work the way we wish it would or the way we state it would. At the same time, I was looking at the series called Vikings, uh, don't know how many of you have seen it, but it's, I think it's a Nordic, uh, or maybe it's a Nordic production, uh, highlighting some of the best actors from the Nordic region, telling the history, uh, both in English and in the local languages, about the Vikings, what their relation were, how they came together. It's a really beautiful cultural lash of, of Nordic people. We have Finnish, Swedish, Danish, Norwegian actors who all are there together, who all kind of like can tell the story of our continent, or our um, continent is probably the wor wrong word, but our region. And these two things kind of emerged together. So we had a lack in something, we had a really strong historical approach to things, uh, which I learned through the Vikings program, uh, which I then started to read more about. And it kind of like struck me one evening. I could stand behind all of this, talk about it from morning to night and really love it. <laughs> and yeah, I think the cool part in all of that is that I kind of find, found myself. Uh, I 
kind of like realized that maybe I'm, I'm this kind of like modern Viking was the word I started to use. But I saw a huge benefit in that if we could approach history, link it with how the future and the welfare state is, and understand what is going on, that we could actually create a better platform for the world to grow using the Nordic region as the lighthouse for the world's biggest problems. So all these statements I mentioned before, maybe they are true, but maybe we have just became too used to them for us to use them in the greatest capacity possible. And what I think became the vital realization in all of this was that a human being is striving for security. If you look at the Maslow's pyramid, you can Google it uh, if you don't know it. It's a pyramid that explains what people in essence need. And in essence for us to do anything, security for the basics, basic needs in our life is one of the most vital things. Uh, what do you calculate within these basic needs? Well, it's, it's a security to rest, eat, drink, recover, uh, feel safe in the environment you're spending time in, uh, not having to fear that tomorrow, today is your last day. What does create security? Is then the interesting question. And, well, security is created through two main things in today's society, according to me. One is money. Why? Money buys security because this society works uh, on money. Uh, everything runs on exchanging something for something or paying for something with something. Thus, you can buy security with money. You can buy food, you can buy shelter, you can't buy happiness. Maybe you can, but we'll come into that in a, in a future episode. But all these basic needs, you can meet them with money. Well, uh, these basic needs are still met in the place where we don't have any money, where uh, we see the lack of that. How? I think the question answer to this is pretty easy because what else allows you to feel secure? It's that all these basic needs are met in an easy way. And how is that done? It's through communities. So you have actually people who are there for each other, supporting each other, uh, which evolve from being families to villages, from villages to cities and so on. But I think where we got lost there in this calculation and where some other uh, great uh, communities haven't is that a welfare society like Finland, for example, or the Nordic region, you have the money, you have the social security in that sense, so you don't need to have communities. So what happens is that we get, we get parted from each other. And if you look at uh, villages in Africa, for example, here the people are, are really close tight communities. They don't have the money maybe, but they are happy because they have the sense of community. They know that they'll survive because there are people around them that will help them to get things done, get uh, past the hard times. And I see kind of like two really controversial models here. You have on the other side, you have uh, the money part. On the other side, you have the community, the sense of belonging to something. And both of them kind of like deliver the same result in the end. But then again, we have Finland where we are really far away from the community looked approach. We're not that sen uh, we have, don't have that sense of a community anymore. So what I'm trying to do, uh, what my passion became was that could we bridge this gap? Could we actually kind of like meet halfway between the money and between the communities? And 
Vikings, they, they had these beautiful communities that like this whole region was all about that. You came to an harbor, you know, met with people, you came together, you went away, you went out to the world, you found new cool things, you brought them back, back to this community, to this place, you shared it with your friends. This became what the Nordics are actually today. It was this capability, this adaptability, the skill of, of looking outside and bringing it back to our communities, uh, changing it a bit and altering it in a bit and then turning that into something that really works here. And it worked well. Uh, what we have today is something special. Not only here within the region, but on a global context, we have something that works. Something that is, of course, it's not perfect, it's far away from that, but it's a good basis to focus on the bigger problems of the world. It gives us space. And I was reading this rap or report from uh, the Nordic Min Council of Ministers, and you know, because we have this space, what they've been focusing on is that this actually becomes, the Nordic region actually becomes the most integrated and sustainable region of the world. So we have this privilege of starting to think about these kind of things. Like, it's not about anymore how to uh, make ends meet, but it's about how to build something that is good for the world, that is sustainable, that sustains itself and sustains the world while doing that. Also on the other side, it's about how to uh, make the borders of our countries disappear, that we would be one place, we would be more united, more close to each other. And that's where I see the biggest lack and where I see that we can do a huge impact within. And long story short, uh, the Ambitious Africa project turned into this kind of realization and this kind of realization turned into something I call the new Nordic community that I started to build in my head. I started to conceptualize, I started to pitch it. I saw a lot of passion and interest around it. But something was not clicking. I don't know if it was me alone trying to pave the way or if it was me lacking something. But then I pitched it to my friend Jonas and he loved it. He saw something in that, uh, that kind of like influenced his thinking. And at that time, he and his stepbrother Johannes and, and uh, Jonas's wife, Julia, they were doing uh, a marketing agency called Ranch. And the marketing agency was doing well. I, I was doing some activities with them and, and saw a lot of potential in that. Also some collaborative cases. And we were seeing kind of like a peak in growth for the moment. And, then we stumbled across the realization that, hey, what if we would unite these things? What if we would unite the ranch marketing model uh, together with the new Nordic community model and create something around that that would actually serve the bigger vision and allow us a framework to work outside from that is not only relevant within Finland, but it's actually relevant and interesting for the whole world. And you couldn't believe how quickly everything fell on place after that realization. We met with Peter Westerbacher, the founder uh, of Finest Bay Area Development, uh, but also one of the major uh, uh, drivers of, of Angry Birds in the Times, uh, one of the founders of Slush, who saw immediately a match made in heaven there. So these things together became what we call today in orders. And Norders became a creative community, agency, and academy to empower uh, the rising stars uh, by the best practices learned from the North Stars around us. And, well, first I need to explain what is a rising star and what is a North Star. So a rising star is someone who has embarked a growth mindset is an order in a sense, and an order is not a person uh, who uh, is from the Nordic region, uh, even though you, that's the vision you probably find online, but an order is someone who equips this rising star mindset. So it's a mindset about uh, being grateful, uh, having the sisu, having the vision for a better world, having the vision to do things together, uh, driving these things together, 
taking these things onward together. Uh, but also a vision of developing him or herself continuously uh, so that we together can do greater things and impact the world in a greater sense. And the North Stars on the other side, they're the companies around us who uh, and, and people and companies around us who are leading the way. So we have companies such as Spotify, Klarna, who have been doing a tremendous work from the Nordics to the world, creating both things on the non-profit side, but then also on the business side. We have amazing talent uh, such as Peter Besserbakka. Uh, we have Bjar uh, Bjarke Ingels uh, from Denmark amazing North Stars who are leading the way, showcasing that uh, by leveraging this value base and, and leveraging these skills that we have, we can actually change the world for better and change the perception of people. So Nordus became a platform to learn from these, uh, turn it into best practices, now sharing those through our agency uh, in different kind of agency gigs, but especially focusing on the community. So how could we make all of these things accessible not only for individuals joining the community, but also for companies to get the best practices, to understand the Nordic value base, to understand the Nordic model, to understand the best tricks and tips that we have here. And that's what we're aiming to do today. And that's why we also have an academy to do the trainings and do the teachings in a pedagogical way. So in a way that where we leverage the best educational practices we have here in the region. So Norders became a framework. It became something bigger. It became a basis to conduct different kind of activities. And I can't wait to showcase you all of the different things that we'll be building that we're going to launch bit by bit during uh, the years to come. But I think it's all about understanding that if you work throughout something you believe in, if you work with some values that you can be honest to, you're able to run a lot faster and you're able to fail faster and learn quicker. And this is in essence what I think it is all about, what Norris is about. Uh, but I think we are missing a lot of pieces to play the amazing game of Viking chess, for example. We need to have all the pieces on place to even get started. And that's the goal. That's what we're aiming to do. And well, my journey took me here. Uh, today, um, I'm working uh, a lot on the projects that we have on the table. So a lot of building orders, a lot of uh, on making the ends meet within Ambitious Africa. And also uh, finalizing my master's thesis from Hunken School of Economics, considering the topic, uh, why, does the Nordic, uh, new, why does the new Nordic region account for most unicorn companies for per capita? Because with 1% of the population, we still have 9% of the world's unicorn startups, which is amazing. With so little resources, we can create so huge uh, uh, things. So something must be going right. So that's my story, in essence. You know me a bit better, and then what I didn't add, uh, you'll find from LinkedIn. I uh, have a couple other ventures and hobbies and things that I'm doing. And now we kind of get to one of the most interesting parts. So I kind of like set the table there in the start with the quota that things are going to be a bit different from here on onward. And what that means is that the new Nordic Wave of Change podcast is evolving to something uh, we'd love to call the Nordic Show. It's going to be a talk show. It's going to be an audio audio uh, creation, but also a video creation of different kind of things that we find here within the region and outside of it. So in a sense, we're continuing on the project that the Nordics started some years ago, finding these traces of North all around the world and, and talking about them and telling about them. So that's one of the journeys that I'll do, meeting with people, figuring out their uh, perspectives, stories and takes. But I want to make it more of a discussion. and I want me to start the dialogue together with you, my listeners, because I have a lot to say, I have a lot of thoughts, and if I don't get to share those thoughts with uh, 
peers like you out there. I will have challenges finding what is good and what is bad. So for me, it becomes a way also to express my thoughts and my feelings. And I'm going to cover a huge bunch of topics uh, if this concept is something you like and then share those with you guys. And it kind of like culminates to the goal that what do I want to do with my life? Uh, I want to make Norgers great. There's no question about it. And most of my focus will go into that. But I also want to create myself into kind of like a Nordic themed fairies. So if you may, uh, I mean with that, that I want to make myself into a test bed. I want to make myself into the kind of individual that tries and tests and iterates and learns and then shares that with people around uh, him or her so that we can uh, be better together. And the same I hope for you guys to do for me is that I actually can learn from you. What do I need to implement? What do I need to test? What do you want to learn about? I'm, I'm a really curious curious person and if there is something that you feel that you don't have time or energy or, or even grit or, or uh, enough of, of uh, guts to do, I, I, I want to do it. I want to test it. I, I, I want to figure it out. Uh, and this kind of like the last topic that I'm lifting out is uh, and repeating myself a bit from the start, but I, I believe in a world where the right answers comes from listening to yourself. And the world gets harder and harder all the time because we have so much information around us. There is uh, what you should eat. You should only eat vegan food. You should only eat meat. You should only eat uh, according to the, uh, the table model and whatever like different uh, perspectives on food there are. Uh, what should I believe? Which one should I choose? Which studies are the most trustworthy ones? I believe you can read a lot, you can find the best practices, but uh, even the best practices won't be the best ones for you. And what I mean with this is that we really need to sit down, eat a month or a year of vegan food and see how our body adapts. And it takes time and effort. But that's the only way you know. Or eat only meat for a week or two. How does that affect you? Does it uh, feel better in your belly than it actually feels in your head? Uh, because uh, in a sense like you're doing bad to animals, but at the same time maybe your body is feeling the best ever. How, how do you relate to that then? This is all about listening and learning and understanding your own body and your own perception and how your body reacts on different things. So. I want to figure it all out and I want to do it together with you. I'm taking a couple of steps that I want to talk about in future episodes, such as the aura ring, the ring I have here in my finger. Uh, I don't know if you know about it, but it's this kind of ring that measures how your body uh, recovers, uh, how your sleep is uh, and so on. So different kind of measurements and then you start to get the data and then you can analyze that on the long term and understand how your body works and how different things adapt. And well, this got me to drink a bit less of beer, <laughs> which I guess is a good start because it actually affects your body in a tremendous way. And all of these things culminate into the Nordic show and into the journey that I'm taking from this episode onward and the episodes going to follow with, for example, uh, uh, Nadir, who is part of Norders. We're going to have some uh, Leon Mieli, who is the mayor of Vimpeli and, and uh, be doing different kind of things. But then also more of these episodes with topics that you guys want me to talk about. So be sure to comment below anything that you want to hear about, uh, anyone you would want me to interview. Uh, anyone you would like, anything you anything you would like to learn uh, more ingoingly about or know about me, and I'm happy to share all of those things. And I also want to create more of a dialogue. So soon we're launching the Norders community platform. So I hope all of your listeners are joining there because there we can actually chit chat together and create different kind of interest groups uh, within the fields that we are really interested about. And I think that's about it. So we've launched so many cool things to help you understand who we actually are and what we're actually doing. And those are also going to be linked below uh, uh, in the uh, show notes. Uh, and I think there you will learn what uh, the fuck is actually in orders. Uh, pardon my French. 
uh, but you will also learn a bit of the things and, and processes what we're doing and it's done together with my colleagues who are just amazing people and who have put so much effort in doing all of this content so leverage that use the power of the people around us because they know and they'll know the best and they will know the best and yeah I, I think uh, this season uh, and I don't even want to call it a season anymore but this journey uh, together with you guys will be amazing and I hope this episode gave you a bit of clarity who I am why I'm doing this and what I'm aiming to do and what our goal with Norgers on the bigger picture is and I guess that's pretty much it uh, I'm happy you took the time and listened I hopeful, uh, I hopefully get some feedback also on my talking because I know that I'm a bit of a rambler so this is also a really good framework for me to learn how to talk so that you actually have the interest to listen to me all the minutes that we go through within these podcasts. Whew, it was a challenge, this one. I, <laughs> I, I thought it was, would be a lot harder to actually sit alone just, uh, alone just talking, but I managed. And I'm really proud of myself because of that. So I think this is a good start uh, for many uh, new things to come. Uh, I want to wish you all a really good luck in the start uh, of, of the autumn. I uh, hope you had a great summer and I'm happy to be back. Uh, see you soon. Uh, there will be coming one to two episodes every week. So uh, on a weekly basis, we get to hang out with each other in one way or another. And if you have any questions or anything you're wondering about, don't hesitate to shoot a message to us orders or to me in any uh, given platform. So I guess this is pretty much it uh, thank you so much and have a lovely uh continuous uh, continuity on your day thank you so much <laughs> <laughs>